In this video, I'll talk about modeling surface water flow in an urban environment using QGIS. So, um, there's several tutorials on modeling surface water flow, but this one will focus on what happens in the urban environment. Before talking too much about this, um, I will have to start with a disclaimer. And we, I guess we have to take it up in full here. So, um, modeling water flow can quickly become really, really complex, especially if you want to include sewer systems and so on. Um, so, um, there are specialized packages. MyGurban is one um, that are really good at handling this type of complex systems. Um, and this is not where we're going with this. We are going to look at some relatively simple approaches to give us some idea of what we can do as a first step in the planning procedure. Um, there are um, other tools that um, are somewhere in between. So our sim water is a, a, water, a one that can simulate different amounts of water and how they flow. But this, I think, is um, what we're going to do is, if, is a good approach for doing um, planning of water management in urban areas. It's not going to be the one that the municipality is going to implement, but it's a good way to start a discussion about hmm, what could we do something alternative to having this big extra sewers as our approach to climate change. So. Some first assumptions. Water flows downhill. That's fine. So in this case, water flows downhill. And then it flows into a depression. As this uh, depression fills up, the water level in it will, will rise. And at some point, the water will continue its way downhill. Um, there can also be other things to take into consideration. So depending on, on the on the the surface so if it is a sealed surface the water will just continue if it's a semi-permeable surface some of the water will seep into the material underneath our top layer um, and also if there's types of vegetation vegetation can hold back um, some of the water and, um, and we can have it evaporate um, through the vegetation so that's the basics. In GIS, we have two issues we have to look at. First, how water flows from one cell to its neighbors. So here there's two approaches. The one is what we call a single flow or a D8. So where water flows from one, from a cell to one of its eight neighbors. And that one is the one where it has the steepest slope. So if you calculate the slope on the cells, then the steepest slope takes all the water. There's the multi-flow, where we have flow in different directions. In this case, if there are more than one downhill, the amount of water is divided between these downhill um, cells according to how steep they are. So the steepest take the majority and so on. So basically, this is a bit more uh, uh, advanced version, uh, but it's uh, there's often an argument for just using the simple one. And then finally, once we have, these are the rules for having from one cell to its neighbor. But if we have many cells, how is the flow in general going to be through the surface? Here, there is um, two possibilities again. Water can flow downhill until it meets a depression and then it stops there. Water can't go further. That's, let's say, the standard version. There's also a, a, um, a version where the water follows the path of least resistance until it reaches the edge of the map. So if it can go downhill, fine. If it can go steeply downhill, better. If it has to go uphill, it will do that. So this is a bit of a strange one. It will it will allow water to flow uphill if it doesn't have any other possibilities. Um, and you therefore have to be aware of this peculiar element in this uh, approach. But it um, has some advantages. Because um, when we talk about the surface, what is it, what is the surface going to be? Um, I've talked about that we have these 
to um, surface, we have the digital terrain model, the DTM, and we have the DSM. If we um, take a quick look in the QGIS, so here we have the DTM, so the DSM, so we have buildings, trees, so on. And we also have our DTM. In this case, all of this comes from LIDAR data, um, as we have seen in the video of LIDAR data. So the buildings have removed and some estimate of what the value is in between the buildings have been established. Um, so the question is which layer to use? In um, natural layers, you will typically use the DTM as a water flow. Um, but in urban areas, water dust doesn't flow through buildings. It will run off the roofs to the sides, never run through the building. So we need to make some form of combination where we combine the DTM with the DSM within the buildings. So you can do that by extracting a DSM for only the buildings using the LIDAR data, or you can filter the standard DSM um, by using a raster layer of buildings. I will, will do the last thing. Uh, I have in another video shown how you can extract the DSM for buildings from LIDAR data. Um, then we have a problem of um, whether or not to um, fill the presents. We, um, if we fill the presents, um, you can make a nice water flow. But in reality, the presents are there often. It's because many of these algorithms have been made for natural landscapes. And if there's a depression, it might just be an error in the model and we want the water to flow on. But nowadays, uh, most depressions are real depressions. Um, so um, we'll probably need to consider to leave them in and let water fill into them. And um, this is a bit of a, a issue that we, we will have to address also. Finally, there is a possibility, instead of just um, filling the depressions, you can also say, okay, we can either just fill up small depressions, um, or we can fill up all depressions, let's say half a meter, but not more than that, or 10 centimeters or so on. So that's basically um, either to fill them completely, or we can fill small depressions somewhat. So that we have different issues we have to address when we, um, we do modeling of, um, of this in the software. Um, if we look at what um, the possibilities are with depressions in QGIS, there are some different algorithms we can use. So um, we can either take a um, a fill uh, uh, so fill the, the 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 depressions are typically called sinks in this situation. So we can fill the sinks completely, um, and there is a a, pro, uh, a tool called fill sinks XXL. Uh, is um, a Wang Li, which I think is a, the best solution for this in QGIS. There's also a fill in the ArcGIS that you can use. It does exactly the same. You can also fill, the, uh, start by filling the small ones, so not the, necessarily the deepest one, but the ones with the smallest area. Um, this is called R fill, which will um, fill the small ones, and you run, have to run this one several times. Um, that will work fine on the Mac for reasons I don't quite understand. It crashes after a couple of times on Windows. Um, so I mean, there are, there's something, uh, some bugs, something that I haven't quite understood yet what goes on. Um, but basically, the R fill has to be used. One R fill on, the, on a layer, then run it again on the output of the previous R fill, and run it again on the output of that, so on. So run it several times on top of its own output. Uh, until you get a surface that you like. And um, finally, you can um, fill the sinks to some extent, so say fill them up 5 centimeters, 10 centimeters. And in QGIS, you, there is from the Saga, 
um, tools. There is one called Sync Remove, where you can set a limit on how much you want to fill them. And you can do the same with the fill procedure in ArcGIS Pro. And then finally, you can say, okay, no, don't fill them. Instead of filling them, dig channels to ensure that water runs out. And again, the, the same sink removal tool from Saga. And instead of filling the holes, dig channels in the obstacles that create these depressions um, or sinks. And in that way, ensure that the water flows. So there are different approaches that we can look at. So this is the, the, the basic theory. Um, in, um, in the next video, I will, um, I will look at um, how this can be done specifically in QGIS. So now I've talked about how it's in theory done and talked about some of the procedures. Um, in the next video, I will look at exactly how show an example of how it's done in QGIS. So um, hope to see you in that next video.